We have a lot of catching up to do. So let's do it. Hello, Pels! I am Jordan54, and welcome back to Catching Up. Self-explanatory series where I catch up in more ways than one. Catching up in my save file in Super Mario Galaxy, and catching up with you guys with what's been going on in my life. Last time, we talked about Spring 2020, and the descent into chaos that everything experienced. And we did the fountain! This time, we're going to talk about a further descent into chaos. And we're going to be doing so in the kitchen. It's a great start. <laughs> I, I, love, I love starting an episode by falling into a void that doesn't cost me a life. So, this episode is going to talk about, like I said, summer 2020. And it is specifically going to be talking about my summer semester experience. As I said previously, those at my college are required to do a mandatory summer semester following their sophomore year. Everyone hates it. Because it's not well managed, not well designed, and completely ruins what would other ha otherwise have been a perfectly good opportunity for someone to look for an internship. So now try taking that and putting it online. I knew it was going to be bad. <laughs> I knew it was going to be very, very, very bad. So we're here in the Beach Bowl Galaxy. Um, this will be my first time swimming in Mario Galaxy on the Switch. I have to get a little accustomed um, to the Switch again because I've been playing Galaxy on Dolphin uh, because, as previously mentioned in one of my videos, I have now officially upgraded hardware. I am no longer using uh, what I have referred to as a dementia-ass laptop. <laughs> that is now my secondary machine, and I have moved that uh, to another room, and taking its place is my new supercomputer. It's got an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X, it's got an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 Super. Both of those are probably going to be working overtime to make sure that the uh, game capture that I'm doing right now is working just fine. Um, but I'll, I'll talk about that even more uh, in the final episode of Catching Up, since, you know, that that's more of a recent thing, my hardware upgrade. But it was relevant to mention because, you know, uh, figured I'd mention that I might be a little subpar in terms of my movement because I'm used to using a Wii Remote via Bluetooth, uh, which, it, it's kind of crazy that you can just do that, you can just connect a Wii remote to a computer using Bluetooth. <laughs> but if that's the if that's the technology they use, that's the technology they use, right? So, following spring 2020, I had I think a week, maybe like a week and a half to relax. Normally I'd have like two or three weeks in between semesters. Um where I could relax and prepare for the next one. At the very least, that that that's what I would have um, in between the fall and the spring semesters. That's what I had between the fall and the spring semesters. And then during the summer, obviously, you have the entire summer. Um, although most college students, such as myself, look to you know do something during that summer, namely an internship. And none of us are able to do that that semester unless we miraculously managed to dodge the experience by, in most cases, lying and saying that you have some sort of premature graduation plan that Arch would mess with. Arch being the name of the summer semester, Summer Arch. Um, so if I, if I knew that that actually had it as high of a success rate as it ended up getting, um, then I would have 
definitely been looking for internships and lying about a fake premature graduation plan <laughs> to have gotten out of Arch because believe me it would have it would have been <laughs> very much worth it to get the hell out of that experience it was awful from start to finish and uh, the only good thing about it is that I knew it would be awful so <laughs> I wasn't exactly surprised when I look back on it as horrific. But before classes even began, uh, I used the week and a half of spare time uh, to try and, you know, catch up on things. That That is the name of the game, right? Literally. So I caught up on some of the things on the list that I had mentioned previously. It was basically this big list of things that I wanted to do before even considering returning to YouTube, because they were honestly of higher priority. Um, and they had been, a, a lot of them had been like over my head for a while. Um, I wonder if the last star piece is also over my head, <laughs> because I don't seem to be finding it. It's probably in a very obvious location, so don't mind me. <laughs> there it is. Um, and so, during that time period, I was doing some other things. I was, you know, washing some of the stuff that I have, uh, like my water bottle and spray fan, which is very useful in such hot temperatures as the one I'm recording in right now. <laughs> Should also mention that I built my new PC during a heat wave. <laughs> yeah, a little bit risky, but, you know, managed to not fry anything yet. <laughs> Sorry, Wiggler, but uh, the musical notes are my priority now. So yeah, I was, I was progressing along the list, but one other thing that I was doing was seeing, because uh, while I was at school, um, I did not have a phone that was compatible with Pokemon Masters. Pokemon Masters is only compatible with 64-bit phones, and my phone at the time was 32-bit. It was the Galaxy J7, which... I mean, I considered it an upgrade, but that's because I was literally upgrading from a fucking iPhone 5S. But, I couldn't curse that iPhone 5S that much at the time, because it actually is 64-bit. In fact, I'm pretty sure it was the very first 64-bit phone Apple ever made. And it just so happened to be the one that I had. So I used that to then go and uh, start playing Pokemon Masters. Uh, I had never played it before. And, uh, well, let's just say I kind of got sucked into it and got addicted to it. <laughs> Uh, and so it was my go-to game for a while. It was my high priority. During that time period, I also took the liberty of actually making an entire full-length backlog of every video game that I want to get to, at least for now, um, and got increasingly depressed at the sheer size <laughs> of it um, because it got, it got very, very big. Uh, I'm not sure if it's at 200 yet, but if it's not, it's close. Ah, oh, yes, that's right. So, uh, Rosalina's library is opened. We're not going to be doing any storybook stuff yet. Uh, that's going to be later. Uh, for now, we're just going to continue within the Beach Bowl Galaxy. It is also true that a Hungry Luma has appeared. Again, we'll take care of that once we're done with these four galaxies. For now, we're going to go back into Beach Bowl, and we're going to do arguably the easiest mission in the game. <laughs> At least one of the two easiest. So yeah, I got sucked in the Pokemon Masters. Um, There's a particular character who was being added to the game, and I'm just like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna see if my phone's compatible. Um, I believe it was Jasmine, um, and I was like, you know what? It, it might take some some successful pulls, but I th I think I can get her. I, no, <laughs> holy shit, man. Um, all I can say is. Don't... Don't get sucked into a gacha game. Like, I have a lot of friends um, in my college who are addicted to Genshin Impact. 
Um, and I was addicted for a while to Pokemon Masters and was in the same camp. I recently, this past week actually, um, just said fuck it and stopped playing. And it kind of feels like, um, like stress lifted from my body, to be completely honest. I didn't, I didn't end up doing everything that I wanted to do in that game, but <laughs> now that I'm not playing it anymore, I kind of don't want to go back to it. And that's not to say it's a bad game, um, it, uh, entirely at the very least, but it's very unfair. It's, it is a very unfair game. <laughs> um, I just feel like a lot of the listed probabilities aren't actually accurate. <laughs> and yeah, it's it's also, even by gotcha game standards, one of the more unforgiving ones in terms of trying to get the characters that you want to get. <laughs> uh, but for anybody who does want to play Pokemon Masters, no, I'm not going to say don't. You can play it if you want. In fact, I kind of recommend it, because it is pretty fun. Uh, for some time, in moderation. But don't don't be afraid to uh, step away from it if you need if you need to. So yeah, <laughs> um, I got some tips for you if you're playing the game. Um, so you get some of the what they're called sync pairs, the the characters with the Pokemon. Uh, that you play as from the story. All I can say is, um, yeah, obviously because they're from the story, they're usually not as good, but one of them is like better than almost all of them, and that's Skyla and Swana, uh, because of how tanky she is. So, yeah, that there, there's my tip. Use, use Skyla because she's incredibly tanky. I do believe you also get Koga from the story, and he has access to a move that inflicts Toxic Poison, which is easily the most broken status condition in the game. So, use Koga. And you get Misty from the main story. And Misty has access to an evasion boosting move. I think I have to talk to him before the Golden Shell appears. Yeah, okay. I was like, where is it? And so, yeah, the... Basically, the combo that was my all reliable in that game was Misty Koga Skyla. Once I had all three of those and had leveled them up, and the game's mechanics changed radically during my time playing the game. Um, like, they used to have uh, entirely different events and mechanics, and it's very different now. Um, I feel like I'm part of the old guard for the game anyway, because I started playing before they added the stamina system, uh, which a lot of people hated. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I don't despise it. I just thought it needed some tweaks, and they gradually added those tweaks as uh, everything progressed, so, you know. There we go, there's our gold medal. You can see the secret star uh, planet in the background, that's cool. Are you even one of my students? Speaking of students... <laughs> uh, so yeah, I got sucked into Masters, it was my free time from my classes, which started uh, towards the end of May, and I was taking six of them, and I should not have been taking six of them. <laughs> S simple, as simple as that, I should not have been taking six of them. So... What were the classes that I was taking? Well, um, because of the way that Arch decided to schedule things, uh, most people who actually wanted to get somewhere in Arch were forced into 8 a.m. classes. Another wonderful mechanic that they had in the scheduling was that there were no class blocks allowed to be on Wednesday which meant that lab blocks for a lot of classes that traditionally would be on Wednesdays were not allowed to, <laughs> were not allowed to be on Wednesdays, which is fucking stupid, because it really messed with, like, everything. Anyway, so I took... Uh, one, of my, one of my classes was Professional Development 2, and it was the class that gave me the least amount of issues, and despite not being particularly interesting, ended up 
uh, being one of my favorite experiences that summer because it was to the point, it was well run, and it kind of was made easier by the fact that it was online because of the way that you do presentations. Um, basically, if, if anyone for some reason is still stuck in online school, I, I fucking pity you. That is... Well, it is something I would wish on my worst enemies, because they're my worst enemies, but... Um, let me tell you something, it is... It, wow! <laughs> that was sick! Yo, double bounce on the bats? Might have to do an instant replay on that one, that was sick. That was so awesome! <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, anyway, so, um, if it, yeah, if any of you are still in online classes, I salute you, um, you can make it through, I hope, um, it is not a fun time, but if you are, uh, here's a little trick if you happen to have a double monitor set up at home, alright, and you're in a call and you have to do an online presentation, alright, so here's what you do. So, it's probably like some sort of PowerPoint, Google Slides, whatever it is. Um, you have some sort of visual aid as you're presenting something verbally live. That's how most presentations are. So here's what you do, alright? So, you take your presentation and you open it, you open the same presentation in two tabs, alright? And on one monitor, you have it so that the presentation uh, is not in present mode. And then you write what you want to say in the notes. In the little notes section, you write what you want to say as your script for what you're going to be talking about. That was close. And you, yeah, you don't put it in present mode. Then on the other monitor, that is the monitor that you, the the other monitor is the monitor that you screen share, and that's going to be the one that is in present mode. So you put that one in present mode. That's the one that you screen share while you're on the call. All right, and then you just have that in present mode. And as you advance to slides in present mode on one monitor, you advance to the next slide on the other monitor with the script visible. And if you want to be extra advanced, the monitor that's closer to your webcam should be the one with the script. Then you can create the illusion of making eye contact through your webcam while reading off a script. There you go. Foolproof method for online presentations. Worked for me. That's what I had to do at the end of professional development, too. Worked like an absolute charm. Let's get the secret star. <laughs> uh, and it was it was another situation where there were a lot of this this one actually pretty almost every presentation uh, topic was interesting. Um, the entire concept, it, the subtitle for the class was Technical Issues and Solutions. Um, although it was also heavily focused on the non-technical issues and solutions. Mainly the fact that pretty much every disaster that has happened in the, the field of engineering hasn't been, for the most part, due to machine error, it's been due to human error. It has been due to lack of management, you know, people not being responsible, Mario doing crazy dives with the shell that might kill him. Uh-huh. Alright, Mario. Alright, Mario. <laughs> Alright, if I, if I die, tell the jellyfish sisters that I love them. Um... So, <laughs> uh, yeah, engineering disasters, they're the ones that you'd expect, you know, like Three Mile Island, Deepwater Horizon. The Concord one was crazy, that one was like straight out of Final Destination. 
there was the one about someone who like mixed mixed up soap and uh, like something that was supposed to go in a like a cocktail or something. <laughs> uh, and then it went to student presentations, and we actually did have some freedom over which one that we wanted to choose. I don't think you can reach this with a triple jump. Especially if you don't build up speed. Uh, and so I decided to go for the Fukushima uh, disaster because I've always been interested in nuclear power and people... Wow, I actually did it! Let's go. Yeah, screw you, Cataquack. Uh, because I've always been interested in nuclear power and I love how the Ice Mario is, the f is in... <laughs> is um, first seen in a secret star if you get them in the order that I'm doing them. It's supposed to be introduced in uh, Freeze Flame, but if you get this first, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, <laughs> so, I went for Fukushima because I always feel like nuclear power has been demonized way, way, way too much. And doing research on that uh, the disaster kind of proved that, that a lot of the issues had nothing to do with the fact that it was nuclear power and everything to do with the fact that it was a literal tsunami that, uh, you know, fucked everything up and, you know, other things were outdated. Literally, the, the only thing that wasn't outdated in that situation was the nuclear power itself. <laughs> So, yeah, that, that was interesting to talk about. Uh, come on, Cataquack. Cataquack. I presume you're still following me, yes? No? Cataquack! <laughs> uh, oh, okay. This isn't, like, freezing water. Otherwise, it would provide a blur effect to me. <laughs> Uh, come on. Let's go, buddy. Ugh. Come on. Yes, there we go. There it is. That mission's cool. And, yeah, the presentation went really well. The class... Professional Development 2, it was a six-week class, so it's half this it was half the duration of the semester, so and it was one of my 8 a.m. So I was able to uh, get rid of my eight one of my 8 a.m.s when the second half of the semester began, which was good because I figured and I was right that the second half of the semester would be the hard one. The harder one, I should say. Fast folk comet time. Uh, the other 8 a.m. stuck with me the whole time. And that was Intro to Electronics. And that was the other... It, it, it's ironic, because it, my two 8 a.m. classes were my two favorite classes that semester. <laughs> um, despite the online setting of the class, it was taught very, very well. But boy, oh boy, were there a lot of homeworks. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, were none of them easy. I don't think the class overall was was harder than electric circuits, but it was definitely close. I knew going into that class that the exams were infamous for having averages in the low 50s. Uh, and I knew that them being online certainly wasn't going to help anything. Whoa, we're good. <laughs> Everything is under control. Uh, and so... Intro to Electronics was actually one of those classes that picks up right where the previous one left off. This one picked up right where Electric Circuits left off, where we were talking about um, filters and Bodhi plots at the very end of Electric Circuits, and that is where Intro to Electronics started. And much like the other class that I mentioned uh, last episode that did that, uh, it started with a non-speedy comment version of the final exam. AKA a homework review of the entire previous class. And much like that other class, it was possibly the hardest activity, uh, the hardest homework in the 
entire class. It was definitely the longest. It was insane. Uh, oh, long jump to save my life. At least I think it did. We'll never know. We'll never know for sure. Unless someone decides to do the frame data. That's not going to be me. <laughs> so yeah, Intro to Electronics was awesome. Um, taught really well. One of my friends was my lab partner for that class. Would have been nicer if the fucking labs could have been in person, but, you know, Corona. And so, yeah. There was that class, then I had four other classes that I was taking. So, one of them, uh, two of them actually went uh, sort of together. They were designed to be taken together, but they didn't need to be taken together, and more and more people realized this. And so the co-requisite thing for them was sort of taken down and you could just take them whenever. And I kind of wish that I took them in separate classes uh, because I feel like the second one that I'll be mentioning, if I didn't take that that summer, I would have had a much better time. That would have been the keystone that would have made everything fall back into place and be totally fine. But because I took that specific class, everything was a nightmare. So. Uh, the other class was Signals and Systems, and to this day, it is either the hardest class that I have ever taken, or tied for the hardest class that I've ever taken. Ah, yes, that's right. Good old Phil board. Well, now it's time to see how a bubble works on, uh, <laughs> on the Switch. So far, pretty good. Uh, the fact that you can reset the gyro so easily is certainly going to make things a lot smoother. Alright, so. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I mean, Signals and Systems was insanely difficult, but it's one of, again, one of the classes that exemplified, like, difficult class doesn't mean bad class. And as much as I wish that that class was not online, the professor who taught it that semester doesn't usually teach it, and he teaches it better than the professors who usually do. So I'm glad I took it that semester. Same goes for Intro to Electronics. The professor who taught it that summer left for another college uh, after the summer. And afterwards, it was definitely taught nowhere near as well. I've seen what it looked like in later semesters. It was not as good. So, again, I hated taking those classes online, but I probably would have hated taking them. <laughs> I probably would have hated taking them um, later, even more. Now it's decent going online as well. Shout out. Um, you might have seen him making uh, a couple intros and other graphics for Joe Epic 4 Reacts. So, yeah, Signals and Systems, it was talking about um, communication systems, and it was very math-heavy uh, and kind of theoretical, but also had some decent applications. It, 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 well, kind, did I say kind of math-heavy? Very math-heavy. <laughs> Uh, the most math-heavy engineering course I've ever taken, with the exception, maybe, of the sequel class to it, which I took later in the fall. Um, and it's funny because I have now taken two, like, math-math courses that have taught me about Laplace transforms. And I have learned more about Laplace transforms in my supposedly non-theoretical, non-pure math engineering class than I have in my actual pure math classes. Uh, and that has to do with the region of convergence, which was not taught in any of the math classes, but was taught in my engineering class. It's, it's weird how that works. Everyone has all of these presumptions about the classes, and they're, they're actually not right. I had them myself. I'm guilty of it, too. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a good class with good material. What wasn't a good class with good material was the class that sort of goes alongside it, which is called Engineering Probability. It was a probability theory and statistics course. 
and the material was sort of interesting, but it was completely ruined by the way that the class was taught, and just how unbelievably fucking atrocious my professor's handwriting was. I could not read anything this man wrote down. I swear that, that that guy was a medical doctor in a past life. Holy fucking balls, dude. I couldn't read a goddamn thing. Not that I was usually awake during the lectures, but I'll get to that. Uh, and I have a feeling that the, the reason that I wasn't, or one of the reasons that I wasn't, had to do with the fact that the lectures were a waste of time, because I couldn't read anything he said. And his mic usually wasn't very good, so I couldn't usually hear what he said either. And so, it turned what would have already been a difficult class into an absolute nightmare. Thankfully, I had multiple friends in that class, but this was one of the classes where that kind of didn't help much, unfortunately. It definitely did help, I just wish, you know, things worked online. But that was out of my control. So... We were talking about that, and, you know, it, it switched from probability to st st <laughs> Pro switched from probability to statistics midway through. Nothing really got much better. <laughs> um, and the due dates for the homeworks were really weird, and it was just not a very good class overall. I don't know if it was worse than Intro to Algorithms, but if any class was, that was. Alright, Haunted Mansion time. Oh, I was hoping that would kill him right away. That would have been awesome. It's interesting. I saw somebody... Uh, it was Romer. Um, a really good blind LP channel, if anyone wants to check him out. I watched him... He played Super Mario Sunshine blind, and then he played this blind. So he played this after Sunshine. And when he got to this part... He was, like, trying to ground-pound the ghosts and was like, Why isn't it working? <laughs> I'm ground-pounding- that's what- that's the way you kill them! That's the way you kill the booze! Why isn't it working? It, it was kind of funny, because, like, yeah, I mean, in terms of 3D Mario games, the two 3D Mario games that came out before this one, you kill booze by ground-pounding them. At least that- that- I believe that's the case. And so, he was trying to do that, and it wasn't working, and it took him a while to figure out that you have to lure them into the light. Alright, come on, buddy boy. You can actually burn yourself on those candles, by the way. I've done it before. Sometimes on purpose, sometimes not. So, yeah. Um, so that's those four classes, and there were two others. And these two are sort of another pair. I've been sort of been talking about them in pairs. This pair happened to be at the exact same time as each other. This is because one of the classes that I was planning on taking for the summer got canceled because things went online. And I wanted to take a class that would satisfy a specific requirement that it did. And so, I took another class to fill that void. Uh, unfortunately, I would find out that I kind of overfilled the void, you know? Can I reach that launch star from here? I love this game! <laughs> it's awesome! <laughs> there we go. Gotta get all those star bits. Alright, so... There's Luigi. We'll get him in just a minute. <laughs> That's not the way you're supposed to get that, but... <laughs> I love doing that. So. Those two classes were... Intro to Complex Variables. And... Analog role-playing games. There's Boo Mario, another new power-up. Gotta avoid the light. 
So intro to complex variables uh, was an, uh, a specific tech elective that I needed to take that uh, I was interested in taking because it was taught by the professor that had taught my other math classes, and I knew he was great. Well, it, it was at least taught by him for half of the semester. So I figured, ah, I might as well take it. A bunch of my other friends were in that class, so I figured I might as well. And that was a class where having friends in it was very helpful, because uh, th that was a very high-concept class. It was all about complex analysis, and it was very pure and theoretical. Uh, in terms of Laplace transforms, I'd say signals and systems is a bit over it, but... This one went into Laplace transforms in the context of complex analysis, namely uh, the residue theorem with inverse Laplace transforms. So that was cool. Um, most of you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. If you do, I salute you. <laughs> um, and it's fine to not know what I'm talking about because uh, it would be very bizarre and concerning if most people did because most people don't have a use for inverse Laplace transforms. As cool as they are. Yeah, lots of differential equation applications. The, th the subtitle was Theory and Applications, so we, we got a little bit of both. There's Weege. What's going on, buddy? Yep, so I think on the very next mission, he's gonna find one in the good egg. And that's the other mission that competes for the easiest in the game, and you'll see why. Leader Squish. <laughs> anyway, so. The lights are, in fact, back on. Not in the bedroom, though. That'll be for next episode. So, yeah, Intro to Complex Variables was fun. And the other class was also fun, I just wish they didn't have to be taken at the same time. Thankfully, one of them was doing asynchronous lectures, so I didn't have to worry about going with them. And the other one, Analog Role Playing Games, was very focused on live stuff, like you had, you have to be there for it. And there was a lot of writing in that class, lots of, uh, lots of reading responses and journals and all this stuff. It was very, yeah, it was very writing heavy. And it was all about the analysis and design of role-playing games, uh, namely tabletop ones, uh, which I wasn't very familiar with. Originally, I was going to take one that's called Films Every Game Designer Should See, which sounded a lot better and a lot more low stress, but, uh, you know, at least the professor that- Oh my god! We're good, everything's under control. Oh, I was trying to jump on him. I need a coin! Oh, okay, we're good. Die! Alright. Oh, he saw me. He made a little fire thing. Uh-huh. Th there's another bat. Yeah. Okay. Homing attack! We're good. Crisis averted. Alright, anyway. So yeah, analog role-playing games. We, st we started with some lectures and presentations on the design of them, and then we got into playing them. And for a while, um, the class would basically alternate between talking about readings and just playing role-playing games. Uh, one person, uh, in well, everybody would choose one tabletop RPG to... Um, GM, as it's called, Game Master, the person who runs the game. And I decided to choose Cyberpunk 2020, and I'm glad that I did. It was one of the more interesting ones, and it certainly gave me a unique perspective on a certain CD Projekt Red video game disaster that would come out later that year. And I'll, I'll talk about that, I suppose, uh, next episode as well. I think I missed the sling star, did I? Or is it up ahead? I used to have a lot of trouble with this mission. But... In in coming years, I have come to have no trouble with it, basically. Especially with the sling star acting as a nice shortcut. If I had played 64 before this, I might have actually skipped that, because I would have been afraid of, like, winning the race using that, but then 
uh, the Boo, uh, I'm not sure what his official name is, but, uh, the, the Boo Racer would be like, Hey, you dirty cheater, you used the Sling Star, that's not a lot, and then you have to do it again. <laughs> oh, just ten milliseconds over a minute, huh? Good enough! So, yeah, uh, I chose to do Cyberpunk 2020, and that was much later in the semester, so I'll talk about that later. But yeah, those are my six classes. And they made for a nightmarishly nightmarish semester. I should not have taken Engineering Probability, or EPROB for short. I should not have taken that class. I should have waited until the fall, when I was taught by a better professor. And potentially also not entirely online, but probably would have been entirely online. But the lecture videos would have been much more professionally done because it is they would have it would have been the professor who runs the visual effects class. So, you know. So those were my classes. Then you have what they caused. And that was me being entirely nocturnal. Like, before it was, you know, oh, I'm staying up a little later than usual, waking up a little later than usual sometimes. You know, normal stuff. No, this time around it was, this time around it was, like, literally sleep during the day, be awake during the night. And my schedule kind of forced that. So let's start with Monday. So, Monday is at 8 a.m. <coughs> I would have... a reading response due for Professional Development 2. So I'd have to get that done, get that up, get that done. And then Professional Development 2 would be from 8 to 10. And attendance is part of that class's grade, so I'd have to be there for that. Then following that from 10 to 12, there is... Um, signals and systems, which um, was sort of like an optional lecture because they would just be posted online anyway. But, you know, sometimes there would be exam blocks. So, you know, oh, I'm done with the terrace. Let me get back out. <laughs> so sometimes I'd sleep from 10, or, yeah, from 10 a.m. to around 1 a, or 1 p.m., which is when I would have analog role-playing games, and I would need to be there for that. So, I would be there. Every time I go like this, because uh, I talk with my hands, you know? Just like Mario and Luigi. He shakes. So, um, I was seeing if it could shake out of that pole star. So, uh, and then after analog role-playing games, I'd go straight to bed. And I would go to bed, as a result, around 4 p.m. Uh, but I wouldn't be able to sleep for very long. Uh, oh, I selected the wrong mission. I wanted to do the secret star. It's okay. <laughs> we can wait on that. We can do Bouldergeist. I'm curious if I can do the Daredevil run in one try. Uh, but we'll have to do the regular mission first. So, I wouldn't have much time to sleep because I would have a Signals and Systems homework that would be due... Um, ow! Ah, you bastard. I would have a Signals and Systems homework due... There we go. I would have signals and systems homework due at midnight. <sighs> there we go. There we go. Yes, that's the combo we needed. And so I'd have to wake up at around 6 p.m. and get the signals and systems homework done before ow, before time was up. And I would very often be reliant on the grace period for the website that I would submit them to, which is Gradescope. They have, like, this built-in grace period where if you submit, like, two minutes after the deadline, it'll still accept it. So, 
a lot of times I'd be like scanning at 11.59 and be like, Ugh, you know? Because keep in mind, at the time, my phone wasn't very good. Uh, and this would come to bite me in the ass um, a little later on in the semester. We'll get to that. So. Have you, have you heard me say so enough yet? Well, anyway, so. <laughs> um, I would then not be able to go back to bed because right after that, I'd have to start working on an intro to electronics homework due at 8 a.m. the following day. So, Monday, I'd have weekly reading response uh, for Professional Development 2. They're really bi-weekly since there's another one on Thursday. Then, I'd have to do Professional Development 2, then sleep for about three hours, then go for analog role-playing games, sleep for about two more hours, then cram down the signals and systems homework due at midnight, then get straight to another uh, class, or yeah, homework for another class, that being Intro to Electronics, which I'd have eight hours to do, and especially towards the end of the semester, I'd need every single one of those eight hours. Uh, oh, we're good. We're good. <laughs> As the semester progressed, I actually started to get so burned out that there was one that I just straight up noped on. And this is a class where I actually had somebody to do the homeworks with, so that should tell you everything you need to know about the classes I didn't. So, once I submitted the Intro to Electronics homework, which is usually around 8 a.m. when it would be done, Intro to Electronics would be from 8 to 10. So, I'd have to be awake for that, because sometimes, and you never know until at the end of lecture when he says so, there is a team assignment that is due 15 minutes after the end of lecture. So you have to rush to get that done. So I couldn't go to bed right away. I'd have to be there for that 8 a.m. Oh, I'm curious if this is the case. So, a, so I press A and I and I get that and I jump that high. Ground pound. Jump that high, but ground pound and jump. Oh yeah! <laughs> I'm glad that that still is like that. That's good. So, once that is done, and whether there's a team assignment or not, and that's done, we then head along, and I would sleep. I would sleep through Engineering Probability Lecture because it's not worth my time, it would get posted online anyway, and I'd just be done. So I'd sleep, and then I'd be able to... This, this would be the one time where I'd actually be able to sleep for around eight hours. Um, well... Not the one time, the, the one of two times during the weekdays that I'd be able to get eight hours of sleep. This one less than the other one. So I'd have to wake up later in that evening to work on an engineering probability homework, which would be due Wednesday at 3 a.m. So I'd have to work into the night to work on that as well. Then Wednesday, there's no classes, but I'd end up probably sleeping shortly after getting the engineering probability homework done. And then there's a reading response for anal analog role-playing games due at midnight on Wednesday. And I can't sleep after getting that done yet because there's a weekly reading response due on Thursday at 8 a.m. with another professional development two block that with attendance required at from 8 to 10 a.m. following that immediately. So I'd have to get through that sleep for three hours, go to analog role-playing games, sleep from four to six, and do another Signals and Systems homework due at Thursday at midnight. Then, I'd have to do another Intro to Electronics homework due that Friday at 8 a.m. All right, <laughs> you getting lost yet? <laughs> then, go through Intro to Electronics in case there's a team assignment, then go to sleep, wake up, And I'm trying to think if I had anything to do Friday at midnight ever. I think occasionally I'd have an internal electronics lab report due Friday at midnight, but that wasn't every week. Um, and every week I'd also get um, pizza from a local pizza place. 
I have mac and cheese bites that I have gotten addicted to. I had a whole bunch today. <laughs> I'm recording this on a Friday, so it makes it, well, technically Saturday early morning. Oh, the combos! That's the kind of stuff we need to pull off on the Daredevil run. That was sick. The speed run for this boss is probably awesome. <laughs> Although there probably is also some RNG involved, so people probably hate it. Anywho. So yeah, and then I have an analog RPG's journal do Sunday at midnight. And oh, I almost forgot, I have an intro to complex variables homework due Monday at noon. So sometimes on Mondays I wouldn't be able to sleep in between professional development 2 and analog role playing games. I just have to be awake during that whole thing. Or try and sleep for one hour, which it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so yeah, that that is what I had to endure week after week after week. Twelve weeks in a well, six weeks in a row followed by a break week, followed by six more weeks in a row, minus the weekly reading responses, uh, because they, they those weren't in the second half because Professional Development 2 was only a first half course. It was brutal. Uh, it forced me to be completely nocturnal. Uh, and yeah, um, that, was, that was certainly a thing that happened. Um, and that would definitely go on... Uh, that, that would definitely go on my top five reasons why online school is bad, which I said in the previous episode, I do one of those countdowns for every episode that involved online school. There will be another a little later in this episode, so get ready. So yes, um... That was the homework schedule I had to deal with, and it was brutal. Uh, so if you're wondering why I didn't upload any videos during the summer of 2020, that's why. Towards the end of the summer semester, I actually made a community post, because um, I had realized, hey, I hit 5,000 subscribers, that allows you to do community posts, I might as well take advantage of that feature. And I'm going to be taking advantage of that feature a lot more um, as time goes on. I gotta focus a little. This is Boulder Geist's Daredevil run, after all. <laughs> Good. Do your slam attack. Okay. That's fine. And so, I was stuck in my own home. Experiencing the horrors of online school. Not being allowed to go anywhere because of COVID restrictions. Not being allowed to do anything fun. Despite being in a population that is low risk, as a healthy 21 year old, at the time 20 year old. Ooh. Okay, we're good. <laughs> and during this time, following a, a certain story that went viral that I'm sure all of you are familiar with. Um, a group of rioters thought it would be a wonderful idea to, to try and burn down the entire country on dead. <laughs> and this happened to some innocent people. And so it was wonderful being told that you, you can't go around in crowds. That's a COVID super spreader risk. And then watching people on, watching news anchors on live television encouraging people rioting because of some sort of justice. You're not allowed to, you know, go to the bar, go out to certain restaurants, go to the gym, walk outside, go to the beach. You're not allowed to do any of those things even if you... <laughs> even if you... you know, enact common sense and physically stay away from other people, you're not allowed to do that. Oh, but if it's a peaceful protest, then you can, then your quarters can be as close to each other as possible. That's totally fine. If it's for justice, all of a sudden COVID magically disappears from the equation. 
Yeah, so that, so that was wonderful. Um, watching people on live television, being able to get away with, you know, stealing Nikes from stores in the name of justice. But getting away with it, despite all of the COVID risks, again, like, COVID was a risk. <laughs> Thankfully, it's starting to be less of one. Um, they're gonna try and go through the entire Greek alphabet for variants to try and fearmonger people, but the case remains that it's a lot less of a risk than it used to be because of vaccines. There we go. Second try ain't that bad. At least I think that was second try. Pretty sure it was. Yeah, I mean, I did it on my first try in my walkthrough, that's what counts, right? <laughs> so yeah, that, that was a wonderful thing to see while being stuck in doing what was, at the time, the worst semester of my life. And that whole time, the thing that was keeping me through that summer 2020 semester was, well, <laughs> this is as bad as it gets, right? <laughs> Nothing could possibly be worse than this. Yeah, stay tuned for next episode. But we're not done here. No, of course we're not. <laughs> Before we move on, well, as we're moving on, I suppose, let's talk about one good thing that did happen midway through June that I was able to experience and was very happy about. There was a Smash Bros. character that was announced, and we had already known ahead of time it was going to be a character from ARMS. And this was going to be the character that was going to kick off the new Smash Fighters Pass. And I wanted a character from ARMS for a while, because I feel like that series has a lot of really cool characters that a lot of people don't know about. And everyone was like, oh, who's it going to be? You know, we don't know who, who it's going to be, but all we know is that it's going to be an ARMS character. And, you know, Spring... Springman was an assist trophy, so we knew it wasn't going to be him. Ribbon Girl was a me costume, so most likely it wasn't going to be her. And I believe there was also a spirit for Twintel. And, you know, we, we just didn't know who it was going to be. We had some ideas. No one was sure about anything. And... I was secretly hoping this whole time, I was like, please be Min Min. Min Min is the fan favorite. She, there there was like a comic or some some sort of like deep lore within the, the franchise where Min Min was the champion of this one contest. There's like a picture of her holding, I thought I was dead there for a second. A picture of her holding like this, uh, this belt. Um, and so yeah, I was really hoping that it was gonna be her. And so when the trailer started at a ramen shop, <laughs> I, I knew it. I was like, yes, dude. <laughs> then Springman caught the letter for Smash, and I was like, no, someone's going to come in and punch him. And I was absolutely right. Turn into a free-for-all. <laughs> and then Min Min ended up getting it. I was so happy, dude. And a lot of, like, really sweaty Smash players are, like, annoyed about Min Min because apparently she's not fun to play against or anything. Which is basically just them not wanting to get good. But, yeah, one of the best DLC additions to Smash Ultimate. Uh, I would say up there with Banjo. Um, and some characters that we'll mention in later episodes. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the last Smash character that I had reacted to was, well, technically it was Byleth, as you saw in the previous episode from unreleased footage. Wait, hold on. Didn't I get another letter from Luigi? One sec. <laughs> Let me see. Did I? I feel like I did. Okay. Because the next Luigi mission should be in the Battle Rock. 
don't mind me. Uh, so yeah, I was I was very happy with Min Min. Um, the last reaction that you saw for Smash technically was Byleth, be but before then, it was the announcement that Terry would be in Smash. Um, I didn't react to the full presentation. I was on a mega hiatus during then. Not the giga hiatus though. Okay. Yeah, it, it's not showing up there. So it, 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 if it if it did, there would be like a a grayed out star with a green question mark. Okay. All right. <laughs> Just don't register my A button. That's, that's that's wonderful. That's nice. Thank you. Very cool. And so I did not record my reaction to Min Min being in Smash because you know I was too focused on other things, other matters. Uh, namely, the fact that not long after Min Min was going to be announced for, or that there was going to be an announcement. I was going to go through my first wave of Summer Arch exams. And before we talk about... Uh, uh, before we talk about how that went, let's... Let's do this episode's edition of Top 5 Reasons Why Online School is Bad as a precursor. Okay? <clears throat> so, and expect some repeats. These reasons will be relevant. Okay, wow, that planet really does look like a Pokeball. These reasons will be relevant to things that happened in each respective semester. So, number five. Time zone differences make things insane. I already talked about how I was basically forced, forced into nocturnality. Is that the word? <laughs> uh, but that's only the beginning of it. My lab partner for Intro to Electronics was from Pacific Time, and I am Eastern Time. You put the pieces together. Because scheduling sure as hell didn't. Is it still following me? Yes it is, let's go! There it is. I was waiting for that. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Uh, are we gonna? Thank you. There we go. Nice. Yeah, so... Time zone differences, I mean... This time, it was even worse, because... You know, it, it was a, a wider variety of professors who were all in their different time zones. They had moved back, uh, because some of them uh, were out of country for the semester since they knew at this point we were in it for the long haul in terms of corona. So it just made things absolutely absurd. Uh, which sort of leads into my number four on this list. School administrators don't give a damn about the well-being of those undergoing online school and they think nothing's changed. All right? To quote my retiring next year college president, uh, who you may know for um, being uh, having a total net salary of approximately eight million dollars a year, um, said in a press conference midway through that semester, and I quote: "It's the same education." Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is. Uh, yeah, alright. As I said in my previous episode, some people prefer online school. I say more power to them, and I hope they use that additional power to go get help because they're sociopaths. And... I'm not one to be like, oh, think of the students, think of the teachers. I'm gonna say this once and once only, all right? This goes for students in general, but you know, teachers as well. You're not special and I'm tired of your fucking shit, all right? I hate it, I, I absolutely hated all this bullshit about like fucking, oh, teachers are like heroes for dealing with online school and stuff, no, okay? You don't automatically earn respect for being a teacher during online school. Being a good teacher during online school demands respect. 
lobbying to keep schools closed and online during Corona does the exact opposite, which is what a lot of unions did. Which probably had more to do the, with the administrators thinking everything is easier on their end, so online school must be wonderful, right? definitely an interesting blame game to play, and I'd rather not play it. I'm too busy playing Super Mario Galaxy and enjoying it. Again, we'll, we won't be doing storybook stuff. That's going to be saved for an actual walkthrough part, not something we'll be doing in Catching Up. <clears throat> you know, it, it would be kind of weird if we read Rosalina's backstory <laughs> while explaining my, my, my backstory. <laughs> So, number three. Homework schedules are far more unforgiving since they don't have to conform to a class schedule. A lot of homework uh, classes, or a lot of homeworks in classes are, oh, hand them in, you know, at the time of our next lecture. Um, hand them in at this set time where everyone's going to be awake in case there's issues. Online school says, fuck that. Anything goes. Take this 3 a.m. deadline, bitch. Welcome to engineering probability. Yeah, that, that's, that's what I had to experience. So, yeah. Deadlines be become a lot more retarded during online school. It was not uh, a fun time. You can fall right into this water again, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> I've always found that funny. And it, it can be ridiculous. A lot more stuff is due at midnight in online school than otherwise. Where they just, you know, leave a tray out in the front of lecture hall and say, put your homework in here at the beginning or end of lecture. You know, if you have questions, tell me during lecture before you hand them in. Uh, instead, we have to do that through online discussion forums, which are far less reliable. Um, at least the, the... Oh, I thought that hit me. At least the one that we were using mainly, which is called Piazza, was actually pretty well... is actually pretty well designed, and actually has a UI that does not make me want to jump off a building. So that's fine, but it, it certainly didn't make anything else better, you know? <laughs> so that's our first green star. Uh, we will be getting all three in this series, and we may be getting, uh, a second one in this episode. We'll see. <clears throat> Depends on if we get another Luigi letter. Oh! Is this it? It is! Back-to-back -back green stars, it looks like. Alright, number two on the list. And the true precursor to uh, the next thing that I'll be talking about after this countdown. I am at the mercy of my own electronics. As said before, you know, if... You know, there's like an internet issue, or some sort of server-wide maintenance or power outage, which actually just happened on campus. Um, right now, the 2021 summer art semester is happening, uh, which is mostly offline, but has a lot of really dumb restrictions that don't really need to be in place, considering the smaller student population during the summer. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. So, yeah, a lot of things that can happen that are out of your control they don't magically go away when you're home. Software and hardware malfunctions can still happen. You can still be left with some absolute bullshit, all right? And we'll be talking about a certain mishap with a printer on the next thing that I'll talk about. But first, number one. Number one on my list. This will sound familiar. Face-to-face -face communication is non-existent and makes things feel worthless. Again, now during this semester, I was not a mentor or a TA or anything like that. And <clears throat> honestly, I'm glad I wasn't because I would not have I would have 
not had time to do any of that. I actually applied, uh, or I, I sent an email to a professor, the, the professor that I had for um, computer architecture, networks, and operating systems, and said, like, hey, I, I'd love to uh, be uh, an assistant for this class during the summer, uh, or one of the other classes that you're teaching. And I never got a response. Um, I ended up actually later that semester mentioning that to him during his office hours and telling him, like, I'm glad you didn't respond because I, I wouldn't have been able to handle being a TA this semester. Uh, I, I probably would have liked the extra money, but, you know, <laughs> I, I would have taken spare time over money when, when it comes to that extreme of a case. So yes, face-to-face -face communication is, it, it's, the, the fact that it's not there, even without being a mentor, it still makes things, it doesn't, it, instead of making things a nightmare, it just makes them a dystopia. You just feel like you have no contact with anyone. The result of this is loss of motivation, loss of enjoyability of just about anything, and the rapid acceleration of burnout. And by the end of the semester, who oh boy was I burned out. Especially considering under normal circumstances I'd have a longer break in the summer, but, you know, required... required summer semester. Uh, getting these... getting these bullet bills in the, uh... in this... Uh, underneath, which is what you have to do, is kind of annoying. Not as annoying as online classes. <laughs> ah, why? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so yeah, it's just it's it's fairly self-explanatory. It just makes things feel shitty when they don't. Hello, come on, work with me here. There we go. <laughs> it, it just makes things feel shitty, and I'm sure everybody understands. Yeah. It's sad because I really felt like I was breaking out of my social shell, uh, like right when COVID hit. And was like, now I'm doing everything with friends, and now I have a license, I can drive to friends' houses and stuff, I can finally go places, do things. And then the universe pulled a reverse card on me. So let's talk about my wave of exams, because we're, we're not done with bullshit. <laughs> we're, we're, we're definitely not done with bullshit. Oh, no, no. Believe me, we're not done. So the wave of exams happens, and uh, <clears throat> over the course of that of my week preparing for my exams, I had noticed that our printer was running low on ink. Critically low on ink, in fact. And I had mentioned this, and my parents were like, Oh, look at this right here. You see this, uh, this PB that you see there? That means pure black. That's the actual ink that the printer uses, you know? Not this big, thicker bar on the menu that looks like it's critically low and is actually alerting you to. No, that's not the one you have to worry about. You know, just ignore that warning, okay? Just keep using that printer, it's fine. We won't replace anything. So exam day rolls around, the first one. And midway through printing out some of my notes, it runs out entirely, and no printing can be done. And there's no time to replace anything because the exam starts in five fucking minutes. And so, mainly because of that, not having those notes to help me during the exam, I ended up doing very poorly on that exam. I probably wouldn't have done super well on the exam regardless, but I would have done a hell of a lot better yes. if somebody didn't think that PB stood for pure black and was the actual thing the printer derives its ink from. And to make matters worse, I had an exam the following day and was still under the impression that PB meant pure black. 
and that it was just some sort of issue that only happened that day. So the following one happened, uh, the following day, following exam, I try to print stuff out, can't get anything to print out. I end up doing poorly on that exam too. Absolutely fucking amazing. A wonderful job. I was, I was at my limit at that point. If I did not have a break week following that, I would have lost my mind. But I was fortunate enough that right after this wave of exams, there was one week of break midway through the semester. There was one more week before we actually got to the halfway point, but let me tell you something. I didn't want to wait another damn week, especially considering right after break I had two more exams, and those ended up going much better. Mainly due to the fact that I took a further inspection on the printer, found out PB did not mean pure black, and after some protesting that was actually peaceful, mind you, and not fiery, but mostly peaceful, actually peaceful, the actual ink cartridge that we needed was replaced. And I was able to print things out as I needed. And believe me, I needed to print out a lot of stuff. By the end of the semester, I had almost emptied an entire ink cartridge because of the sheer amount of stuff I needed to print out. I wonder if you can kill a Gringill with one of those missile bills. Probably not. If you can, it would be way too insane to try, and especially in something like this. There we go, that's all three of them. Driving a species to extinction because the penguins got annoyed. That's what Mario does best, right? Luigi, I drove a species to extinction today. Oh, uh, Mario, don't you think that's gonna disrupt the ecosystem? No, Luigi, they're an invasive species. Just ask the experts, the penguins. Uh, Mario, what makes them experts? Yeah. They, they call themselves experts, Luigi. Yeah. So yeah, I got the ink cartridge replaced during that break week. During that break week was also the 4th of July. Um, I actually just uploaded my 4th of July special a couple days ago. A little later than I wanted it to be, but that's fine. It came out well, you know, I was able to visit Riles 26 for the first time in a while. Uh, and then, a week later, I visited him again to record that. And in 2019, I was not able to see fireworks for the 4th of July because not only was I working a job that day, uh, but it was also one of the busiest days of that job that day. Um, so I had absolutely no time. Off in the distance at one point, when we were on top of a hill, we saw like a five second long fireworks show, and that was a red, white, and blue uh, set of star bits that we just saw there. This game is sentient. Um, but it was really disappointing and kind of made me feel sad that because a lot of my other friends were like talking about the fireworks shows that they were seeing on their um, their, their internships or not um, that when they were in they were subject to much better conditions than I was. So this time around, um, our neighbors actually happened to. Uh, be lighting off fireworks of their own. Now, honestly, I don't understand people who are like, oh, you know, my neighbors are lighting off fireworks. It's awful. Having fun makes me angry. It's like, <laughs> if you have... It, if, you, if your windows are closed and your doors are closed, you're not really gonna hear fireworks, like, at all, okay? Especially if you have a fan or air conditioning in your room, which, by all likelihood, on the 4th of July, is on. 
you know? You're not gonna be hearing the fireworks that are going on. Even if they're, like, down the street from you, if you're in an insulated house, you're not really gonna hear them. And if you do, just p fucking put on headphones, Jesus Christ. To try and ruin other people's fun because one day out of the year, they decide to light off fireworks and celebrate the independence of the U.S., alright? You're just a goddamn party pooper. And I'm dead. <laughs> I forgot that uh, you don't jump alongside that platform. And that might have been one of those moments where I remembered, but then it was too late. Uh, let me see if I can shake both of them. No, okay. Can I ground pound them both, though? No, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and so my, our neighbors decided to do some, some fireworks show, and it was absolutely glorious being able to see fireworks being lit off very close to me before my very eyes, seeing their bright and vibrant colors, and being able to do so for a long period of time. It was definitely worth the bug bites that I sustained from being outside during the summer. There we go. That's how you do that. Yeah. There's a little tip for you kids playing this game. Don't spin jump while you're on that platform. You will die. <laughs> Let's go and face off against Bowser Jr. Get this grand star. So yeah, 2020 was worse than 2019 in basically every way except for the 4th of July. That was an upgrade. And of course, also during that week, um, I started, uh, you know, working on some other things in that list, particularly stuff in uh, my iTunes library. There are a lot of songs that I wanted to organize and some others that I wanted to download, uh, which was a list that got increasingly large as time went on uh, and became unimaginably large. But, you know, I was making progress. It was fine. And I wanted to finish that entire list, again, like I said, before returning to YouTube, before doing any of that. Uh, I knew he was going to be in the way. <laughs> yeah, nice long jump. Good long jump. Ow! Asshole. There we go. Give me that. No way! Oh my god, wow. That was awesome. There we go, that'll do it. So, break ended, I had another wave of exams, it was a lot better, because those were, well, one of them was a take-home exam. Uh, there was a surprising lack of take-home exams that semester. Certainly some that I wished were. Oh well, right? So, skipping ahead to my second wave of exams, um, my second full wave of exams. Once again, being at the mercy of my own electronics made things a fucking nightmare. This time around, it was my scanning app, which decided to absolutely combust my phone at the end of an exam period, which were, which made me miss the submission time for the exam and have to stay awkwardly on a call with the TAs as they were talking with a professor about, like, oh, is this okay, you know, stuff like that. Because my scanning app overfilled my phone of its storage space so I had to do like some sort of resetting bullshit, Inst uninstall the app, reinstall it, rescan everything. It was unbelievable. Um, I sh uh, honestly, at that point, I should have had like an online exam bingo card. I would have checked every box and every column and row. It would have been absolutely ridiculous. So. We don't have too much more to talk about, but once again, we're going to go to our favorite star bit grinding spot uh, to round out the rest of this episode. As I talk about uh, something that happened much later, once again, we're skipping ahead a little bit, but a lot of it was just repeating. It was just repeats of things that I already mentioned. It wasn't, you know, a linear progression of new events. It was repetition of the same terrible three events, you know? <laughs> 
let's go get some more star bits. So, as I mentioned, I was GMing. Grand Ma I was game mastering. I was in charge of running a tabletop role-playing game of Cyberpunk 2020. Which is, in fact, the tabletop role-playing game which Cyberpunk 2077 is based off. And let me tell you something. The tabletop role-playing game is much, much, much better. Even when I, as a novice GM, was running it. And I was very worried about it. It was my first time ever being a game master for a tabletop role-playing game. And it wasn't so much tabletop as it was Discord top because, of course, we had to do it via an online call, because, uh, you know, no, nothing was in person. So, I decided to, you know, it, it was going to take a lot of preparation. It was essentially Analog Role Playing Games' exam, was being a game master for the, for, for one of your games. And so, I, yeah, like I said, I chose that one. I want to try this real quick. Oh, yes! <laughs> I'm testing my skills there. Alright, anyway. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that's right! I didn't even know about this before. Uh, but after playing Galaxy and Dolphin recently, I discovered this. That there is, in fact, a question mark coin if you drift far enough. I didn't know about that. Oh, no, I missed! All good. It's Starbit grinding anyway, you know? So I, I was I was very worried about how it was going to go. I was worried that I was going to screw things up. Things weren't going to go the way that I planned because of a dice roll that happened. A literal dice roll, since that is the basis for many tabletop role-playing game mechanics. Things were going to go off the rails, and I was going to be like you know, paralyzed in what to do next, how to handle things. I was very worried about a lot of that happening, and thankfully it didn't. Um, so, I decided to have the campaign that I was running focus, wait, 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 go back, go back. I want that question mark coin. <laughs> I decided, no, I'm dead. Uh, no, I'm living, <laughs> let's fucking go. That was awesome. I decided to have the campaign focus on a specific class, uh, character class archetype, that I I'm dead this time. No, we're living again! <laughs> Let's go! A specific character archetype that uh, I was really interested in because they seemed very interesting, and that's the Nomads, which really got the shit end of the stick in the video game. Uh, because of how interesting they are, and they didn't delve into how interesting they are at all in 2077, which really pissed me off. But yeah, Nomads are really cool. Um, so I had a campaign focused on that, and um, you know, meeting people along the way, doing an odd job, and then having an encounter with uh, basically the the exiled. Um, the Exiled Nomads, which are referred to as the Raff and Shiv. Uh, so that was fun. Um, and the combat system that Cyberpunk 2020 has is really interesting. It's called Friday Night Firefight, where you aim for specific body parts. Uh, that and the whole uh, creating a character with cybernetic enhancements and all that, it just, le it just led itself to some really interesting ideas. And... The, the thing is, you can't really go through character creation during your GMing process because it takes too long. You have to have the, it already set up. So I actually went through the process of designing characters for uh, the people running the game to use. And the feedback that I got from the people in my group was that the characters I designed were really, uh, actually really well fleshed out um, for a tabletop RPG, uh, especially a cyberpunk one. Um, which is, the, the, the interesting part is I actually took archetypes of Super Paper Mario characters and turned them into Cyberpunk 2020 characters. Obviously a lot of creative liberty to, went into stuff like that, but that, that's what I went with. And it seemed to work pretty well, you know, one of them was Nastasia, one of them was Dementio, one of them was O-Chunks. Uh, obviously not the same names, um, but you know, one of them was Mimi. 
Uh, <laughs> apparently it worked pretty well. <laughs> yeah, you can't really complain about that. And the the overall G the overall oh I'm dead. <laughs> the overall uh, actual GMing process went very well as well. So that's good. Uh, it ended it ended in a very climactic fashion where somebody rolled a natural twenty, which is the highest uh, number that you can roll on the dice in that game. And while they were aiming for the head of the last bad guy, <laughs> so it was so awesome. Uh, I don't think they needed to do that, but they absolutely fucking demolished him. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was a great way to uh, end off that, and I had a fun time writing about it in my journal later that week. Uh, but I had an even more fun time going to sleep immediately after that GM session at 4 p.m., as I periodically did. Uh, I don't think it was that day, but on one of the Mondays or Thursdays, I once again begrudgingly woke up around 6 p.m., got ready to cram through my signals and systems homework. You, you know, you might be asking, oh, well, why didn't you do it ahead? I couldn't do it ahead of time. There were too many other things to worry about, okay? Everything was last minute because all I had were the last minutes sequentially <laughs> to work on everything. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't drop a class, that's because I was a fucking idiot, okay? Now, that's different. So I, came, I begrudgingly came down here to work on Signals and Systems homework, and there's a wasp flying around my uh, laptop setup. So, yeah, had to handle, ha had to deal with that bullshit. You know, finally got the wasp out of my laptop area, and I get to work on my Signals and Systems homework, and there's another one! <laughs> there's another wasp! Now, thankfully, this one wasn't nearly as aggressive, and so I was able to take it out with relative ease once it stopped flying. Uh, but man, that was that was some that was some bullshit. That would have been on my bingo card for sure, you know. <sighs> it's absolutely ridiculous. So, the last thing we'll talk about, as per usual, these semester-based discussions and catching up episodes is the wave of final exams and uh, let me tell you something my final form did not come out this semester it was not there all I had were my wits which was problematic because at that point I was at my wits end and I have never felt more hopeless in my entire life then when I printed out and began work on the engineering probability final exam. I have never felt more hopeless in my entire life. In a lot of insanely hard and high concept exams under a strict time limit, I'm able to like confidently answer one or two questions, but you know, the majority of things is a nightmare. On this one, every single question I was in the dark on. I think it's a miracle I scored in the 50s on that exam. It was so bad. In fact, it was so bad, the professor didn't even release the class average for it. It was that bad. He also didn't curve the class. A good, like, 17% of the class failed, and, like, 5% of the class got an A. Or an A-. minus. It was unbelievable. You know, people talk about how, like, oh, all oh, oh, these comp sci classes are so hard. They get curved. <laughs> they get curved. You can bomb all the exams and still get an A. <laughs> that doesn't happen in engineering classes, man. Uh, now, before I continue talking about final exams, I'd like to mention this, uh, this interesting thing. So, before final exams happen, most of the time, well, all of the time, there are what's called reading days, where, you know, classes end, and then you have reading days to study and prepare for final exams before they happen, and you don't have to worry about classes. Not during Arch! Arch, there are no reading days. I went straight from my Signals and Systems final exam to a class block for analog role-playing games. As I said previously, Moving the mail center during active mail hours 
was the second dumbest thing that my school did in 2020. That was number one. No reading days during an online summer semester before a wave of final exams. I'd like to, you know, talk to that person who thought that scheduling no reading days for final exams. I just want to talk to him, you know, go out, have some drinks, ha have a good time, maybe go over to Five Guys, pig out there, watch the sunset together, and just shoot. It was unfucking believable. So nobody had any time to prepare for final exams. And a lot of the professors were pissed off about this, too. Because they don't have control over this. <laughs> they have to work their shit around the schedules. And thankfully, a lot of my professors actually did a pretty good job at handling this. Not all of them, but most of them. They were like, you know, I wish I could have a more thorough final exam but nobody has any fucking time to prepare for it like they usually do. And because of the accelerated nature of the semester, I had to cut a bunch of stuff from the class anyway. <sighs> Unbelievable. So, then there's the Signals and Systems final exam, as I mentioned. I went to an analog RPGs block right after it. <laughs> yeah, wonderful scheduling. It's just absolutely wonderful. 10 out of fucking 10. So. I actually did pretty well on the Signals and Systems final exam, which I was happy about, because uh, I, I needed that. And... I did not do well on the Intro to Electronics final, but everyone apparently did worse than me. Well, a lot of people did worse than me. The average was like a, like a 50, like a 50 on the dot, and I got a 58. So it wasn't enough to raise my grade as much as I wanted it to, but it probably helped overall, because there was a curve in that class. Probably not a big one, but there was one. Same goes with Signals. And Arch was the official streak-breaking semester where I can no longer say, you know, none of, oh, A-minuses still count. Oh, uh, that class didn't count because I passed no credit at it. Oh, this one doesn't count. Cheese, all of this stuff. No, this one was just straight up, yeah, I, I did not go through the semester. <laughs> Um, I did not go through the semester with entirely A's. This, this, this did not happen this time. <laughs> However, the two classes that I did get A's in were the only two classes that I took that semester and the only two classes I had taken up to that point that were 4,000 level. So there's 1,000 level, there's 2,000 level, and there's 4,000 level classes. I don't know why there's not 3,000 level classes. But, um... <laughs> so 4,000 level is the highest undergrad level. And, you know, a lot of my other friends had already taken some. And I was sitting here like, I, I'm just taking 1,000 and 2,000 level classes because engineers have to take a lot more, than, more of them. I'm a little scared of 4,000 level classes. The only two classes I got A's in were the only 4,000 level classes I had taken up to that point. So, you know, 4,000 level classes are free. They're free, dude. <laughs> They're, they're a joke, they're a meme, all of them. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. So yeah, uh, I certainly had a moment of temporary relief once that semester was over. I was moving into my apartment for the fall, and I was thinking to myself, man, that was horrible. But the worst is over, right? The worst is over. The worst was not over. No, no it wasn't. Let's finish off this mission, deposit our star bits, and next time on Catching Up, we're gonna talk about the worst semester of my life. Homer Simpson comes in, the worst semester of your life so far. Yeah, we'll see about that. But at this point, I wouldn't doubt if things could get worse, because that's the moral of the story, right? It can always get worse.
considering all the things that have happened, I don't think I've been overly negative because it's been awful. But that's enough of the awfulness for this episode. Tune in next time where we talk about Fall 2020, the, the episode where things get even worse. And I'll see you then. Keep looking forward, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.